this young athlete uh, fell onto his shoulder and had a fairly significant AC dislocation, as you can see on the x-ray. I think we'd probably call this a grade five, and we just don't want to demonstrate the technique that we use to reconstruct this AC joint, taking many steps to do this. So this is showing the exposure. We do a little curvy linear incision along the AC joint and then down toward the coracoid. So it's not a big incision, but allows us to uh, spread tissues and get down to where we want to go. Here we are lifting up off the outer clavicle, the fascia over top, and excising the disc from the AC joint. Uh, this is all done uh, with uh, hemostasis, and we incise down in the deltoid so we can identify the underlying coracoacromial ligament. In this particular situation, it is fairly robust, and we use this as some metogenous tissue during the repair and reconstruction. We take it off as far near the acromion as we can, and then we suture it together in a uh, finger trap type technique so that we can get it through a drill hole in the outer clavicle. So this is just demonstrating the technique we do for suturing. There are different methods to do this, but if we entrap the whole ligament, it'll compress it down and make it a little easier, like a Chinese finger trap, if you will. So we'll complete this, and there it is demonstrated now. And that's a fairly robust coracoacromial ligament. We've now prepared a allograft semitendinosus. We've whip-stitched this as well, so we can pass it to, around the coracoid and through a drill hole in the clavicle. And uh, we have a fairly good length of tissue here because we're going to use some of this extra tissue to come over top and reconstruct the uh, AC ligaments at the top. So now we obliquely uh, take off the outer clavicle. Uh, I say obliquely because we want to pass the coracoacromial ligament through the superior portion uh, with a drill hole. And uh, that allows us to have this as a autogenous tissue. Next, we identify the coracoid at the base of the wound, and we get around each side of the coracoid so that we can pass our allograft as well as we're going to use a fiber tape in this situation as a backup support while the allograft is being incorporated. There are different instruments we can use to get around the coracoid and pass the suture. Uh, this is just showing uh, a device that we have. There are some custom-made ones that allow us to do this, and we're doing a looped-type suture that uh, we pull around the coracoid and pull through. Next, we're going to put the fiber tape that we have and the semi-T with its lead suture through the loop and pull both of those together around and uh, at least under the coracoid. We next uh, do our drill hole in the outer clavicle. This one is uh, for the coracochromial ligament. And that's about a 3 16 inch drill. It has to be big enough so we can pull the ligament itself up through the hole so it can act as a tensioning device. And then we're going to drill another hole uh, above the coracoid in the anterior third of the coracoid to pass our allograft and fiber tape structure. We used to use uh, some absorbable suture for this. Uh, the disadvantage perhaps of the fiber tape is it's not absorbable. We worry a little bit about that uh, stress risering on the clavicle and our coracoid, but it seems to work pretty well. So here again, we have a 3 16 drill that uh, we're going to pass now our fiber tape as well as the lead edge of the suture for the allograft, the semi-T allograft that we're using. So we're going to pull this under and around the base of the coracoid, and then using a Husum passer, we're going to pull it uh, through the hole that we've drilled in the anterior third of the clavicle uh, to secure the clavicle down to the coracoid. We leave the coracochromial ligament to the end, so we'll pass first of all the fiber tape and the semi-T and pull it through and then secure that down. We do a, a loop type structure here and you'll see in a moment it's rather fancy to secure the fiber tape to uh, act as a strut to position the clavicle to the coracoid and then tie down the semi-T after that and suture it in position. So you can see this comes through fairly easily if we do the suturing properly. And here you can see our little technique to pull down and suture loop the fiber tape. And secure that down. And if we tighten that up and pull hard, it pulls the clavicle down to the core cord. So that's the strut uh, of uh, non-absorbable material to secure it. And then, of course, we'll fashion the semitendinosis to suture it together. We tie a knot in the semitendinosis to secure it down and then pass big sutures through. So we're simply tying the fiber tape in position here that secures it and acts as an internal strut. 
while the allograft is being incorporated. So here we tie down the allograft, leaving a long limb that we're going to bring over top of the AC joint subsequently to attach to the acromion. Uh, we're just beveling out and smoothing out the edge of the osteotomy cut so it doesn't damage the structure. So we're using a fiber wire, or at least a strong suture here, to secure this down and passing it through uh, all the limbs of the knot and tying it securely. And you can see when we can complete this and, and secure it down, we'll have some extra semitendinosis that we can pass over top to recreate the superior AC ligaments. I think it's important to do a lot of steps to get this operation right. It's one that wants to fail. Um, I'm a little concerned about some of the more tenuous fixation devices that have come along recently. So here we're doing a lot of procedures to try to secure this down to minimize the chance of failure. So doing it this way uh, with uh, different steps, we've had very good success over the years and it's evolved along the years. Now we're going to pass uh, the cracochromial ligament through the outer drill hole through one cortex with that oblique osteotomy. You can see here if we fashion it properly it'll come right through and acts as a fairly structural piece of tissue to help us. So we suture that to the semi-T to secure it. So we now have a fair amount of uh, autogenous tissue, allograft tissue combined to hopefully secure all this down. Sometimes we can't get the cracochromial ligament through the drill hole and so it just sits there or we suture it back onto itself sometimes, but this one so it went very well and came through the drill hole fairly effectively and actually acts as a tensioner in addition to the fiber tape and in addition to the allograft. So we've got a lot of structures holding everything in position, all of which is probably necessary for this operation to be successful. So next we take the tendon itself and we suture it to the edge of the acromial fascia and tissue. We could use anchors to do that here, but here we're just tensioning it. So we recreate the uh, AC ligament superiorly and then we can overlap that back onto itself. And again, we're using good, firm, non-absorbable suture here that will hold securely. Even doing all of this, our post-operative program is to keep patients in a sling for four weeks and allow no shoulder motion, just elbow hand, uh, all of which to, is to ensure healing of this structure that we, we get a good outcome. I think following all these principles uh, does maximize our chance for success. Now we've sutured that into the edge of the acromium, and now we're going to suture it back onto itself over the top of the clavicle. So when we complete this, we have uh, several structures that are going to hold our clavicle down in position. That includes the fiber tape, the semitendinosus allograft, the cracoacromial ligament, and then the allograft reconstructing the superior ligamentous structures. The final step in all this, of course, is a very strong fascial trapezial deltoid closure and we have a technique to do that which allows us to really pull it all together almost in one suture but it's uh, an important part of what we do. You'll see the post-operative x-ray that we'll show you with this with it nicely reduced and uh, I think this patient predictably should get a fairly good outcome. So that allows us it's reduced in good position. This is a mattress suture done in one pass so we grab the uh, pectoralis fascia, we grab the trapezius fascia, all in one pass, we grab the deltoid fascia at the front, and you'll see here that this pushes it, pulls, pulls it all together rather fairly effectively to secure the deltoid trapezial fascia for a good closure. We don't really need a drain under these circumstances given that uh, there's very little bleeding that occurs with good hemostasis. We're closing that deltoid part here where we previously incised, you'll remember, to go after the cracochromial ligament. So if you notice here, this pulls all that together very nicely to close that whole fascia. So that's really the operative procedure that we employ for AC dislocations, whether it's acute or chronic. Sometimes when it's acute, there is some ligament that's remaining there that we can get sutures in and chronic. That's not the case. So I think we need all these steps in order to maximize success for an AC reconstruction. The post-operative x-ray shows a nicely reduced AC joint and hopefully in life it'll stay in this position. This video illustrated the technique that we use for AC reconstruction. There are many new techniques, some of which I think are not quite secure as they should be. This is one that we've time tested over the years. We do some form of uh, uh, taping to secure it. We do an allograft now, semitendinosis. We do the repair of the crack or chromial ligament using it as a tension device, and then we use the uh, allograft over top to secure the superior ligamentous structures. Doing all of this 
gives us a reasonable chance to be successful with an AC reconstruction. Then following all that, we still keep them in a sling for about a month's period of time. All those steps give us the best chance. And I think if we don't pay attention to doing many steps in this procedure, our failure rate is higher than we might want.